Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of TMI365. Today's episode, we're talking automation leveraging Power Automate and AI Builder to automatically read and process invoices coming through your organization. You're likely doing business with a variety of vendors who are sending you a disparate invoice to likely a single inbox or multiple inboxes within your organization, and then you're having one or many people reconcile that before months end. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to automate that entire workflow so they don't really have to have a human involved. As always, if this content is helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's go ahead and dive in. So getting into it here, AI Builder has actually been around for quite some time. It's been getting better and better over the years. You can come into your Power Automate portal here as part of your Microsoft subscription, and you can go under the AI Builder section into the Explore section here, which is where you can explore the various things that it can do, not just the actual extraction of information from invoices. You can see that it does other things like getting the text from photos, taking information from receipts, getting positive or negative sentiment from text data. There's quite a lot you can actually do here, and I'll get into the licensing model in just a second. First, I just wanted to show you actually extracting the information from an invoice directly from doing one on demand, if you will. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload one here. And you can see it's going through analyzing this invoice. This is just a single page PDF that I've uploaded here, but essentially it's not gonna take very long for it to depict all of the information that we have. And so it's done now, and I have the customer information up here at the top. I have other metadata like the due date, the invoice date, the invoice ID, totals, vendor information as well too, where it came from. In this case, it came from Wayne Enterprises. And then we have other things here like the line items as well too. So you can actually parse out individual line items that are part of the invoice. So it's pretty impressive what you can do out of the box here. And you can actually go to a link that I'll shoot in the bottom section of this video, which kind of details out all the things that it grabs by default today. Additionally, if you have the model running and you need to train it in order to basically accept some custom fields you may be getting on invoices that you have, you can go under the model section here and you can start to facilitate a workflow which will walk through and actually let you define the model itself, meaning that you get to depict the metadata that you're trying to gather, and you can go through and actually train it with multiple different documents that you have in your repository. That's a separate video I might do at a single point in time. I'm not gonna get into that today. If it comes up for you, this is where you would go to do that. But let's go ahead and pivot into the licensing model for this as well too. So there's multiple different ways that you can license this. One of the easiest ways to start interacting with it is just to start a trial like you saw that I had within my own tenant. But you can also go in here and you can see that part of the Power Apps pricing plans, you have access to certain included AI builder credits per month as part of being part of these per user or per app plans, which is more of a cost effective way I would say to do that. And as you can see in the asterisks here, you can get the service credits of up to 1 million in service, meaning that if you had many, many users in here that had this, you can get up to the million in service credits. Now, actually utilizing them is kind of a utility-based plan as far as you using the AI Builder credits within your own tenant. And to see that, we can see the add-on capacity in the AI calculator, which is much similar to the Azure calculator familiar with that. So I'll link this below as well too, but this is a calculator you can use and you can see the various things that you can do with AI Builder. And some of these things that you have that you're going to do natively might be the invoice processing. You can see I can type in a number here, like maybe I process a thousand invoices a month and it's going to be one unit, which is $500 for the monthly fee. And this is for the actual add-on itself too. But you'll notice I can go up even to 2000 and calculate and it's still only one unit actually have to go up into the 3000 range for it to skip up into two units. And so likely if you're an SMB, you're not necessarily going to be processing 3000 invoices per month. Um, but this is something that you have at your disposal and you have to think of the ROI here. If you're automating a lot of these processes you do today with full-time employees or engineers in your organization, $500 a month really isn't that big of a deal for processing a thousand invoices per se. So it's something that I would definitely evaluate within your organization. Again, take advantage of the free trial 
So you can experience what I'm about to show you here and then evaluate the number of invoices that are manually reconciled today. See if you can normalize and automate that process moving forward. Okay, so pivoting back into Power Automate here, we're actually gonna go ahead and create our flows using AI Builder. And so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new flow. I'm just going to say it's instant just for the purposes of moving past this. And I'm just going to say AI Builder test. So I'm gonna show you multiple flows here. One is gonna be exported into a CSV. One is going to be grabbing information from the PDF and pushing it into a SharePoint list. And the final one is going to be generating an actual expense item within QuickBooks through a third-party integration I have with QuickBooks Online. So in this, I'm gonna actually just delete this first step so I can go ahead and define my trigger. Basically in this workflow, we're gonna say if an item or file is uploaded into a certain SharePoint environment, then I'm gonna go ahead and generate this flow to read that PDF and I can extract all the information to then export into a single destination. Now, I'm gonna simplify this example just for the sake of time, but you could also do this trigger when a PDF comes into a certain email box and has a certain subject line as well too. So just keep in mind, there's a lot of flexibility just because we have SharePoint or all these other connectors within Power Automate. So within here, I'm going to say when a file is created in a folder as my trigger, and this gives you the ability to define the site address, which is actually dynamic and populated from a dropdown here. You have M365, this is the SharePoint site that I have my folder in, and then I can traverse the folder structure as well too. Oftentimes you're gonna have most of your items in the shared documents folder as part of the default folder structure. And then I'm gonna choose invoice ID or invoice test, I should say, as part of the folder ID where I'm gonna be uploading these PDFs within my organization. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is actually use AI Builder and they have this out of the box here as far as the preset actions down below. And the one I'm gonna be looking for is to extract information from invoices. And so within here, it just takes one parameter, which is the invoice file, which I can get dynamically from the input from above, which is my file content. And then I'm gonna go into a new step, which is to interact with Excel online. And so, like I mentioned earlier, you wanna have something that is doing background process basically to normalize all the invoices coming in so you have a common table to work with which makes it easier to reconcile within your ERP tool wherever you're doing that business today. So in this particular case I'm going to say we're going to add a row into a table and here again we get to define the location This is also in my M365 SharePoint site. I'm gonna pick the appropriate document library and then I'm going to pick the appropriate table, which is also in my invoice test folder. I have AI invoices here. And then table, we're gonna select table one, which is always a great name for tables if you're using that. And as you can see here, it dynamically populated the table headers that I put in there as a preset to this which is located in this particular SharePoint site. So here I can go ahead and extract the information that is coming from the dynamic content through what is read here. So I'm gonna say invoice ID, got my customer name here, got my due date, got my invoice date, invoice total, and then vendor name. So I have all of this in here and I can go ahead and save and run this now just to test this out. So I'll go ahead and test and I'll go ahead and manually trigger this. So basically when you do the manually trigger action here, you're gonna to have to go into that repository that we set up for the SharePoint folder and we're gonna go ahead and upload a document. So this is the PDF that I'm gonna be uploading here. It's just a simple one pager, just for the simplicity of showing you the example, but it's coming from Wayne Enterprises, being billed to Amy's Bird Sanctuary as the company. We have a single line item here for some consulting billable hours here, which is two hours at a rate of $300, or the total being $300. We have other pieces of metadata there as well.
Here's the folder that I have as my SharePoint trigger within the Power Automate flow. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload this file. So now that that's uploaded, let's go ahead and see the Power Automate flow. Here I can see my flow ran successfully. We had the information extracted here as well from the invoice. And you can see all of the items that I showed you earlier on the PDF are actually coming through. You also have these confidence scores as well too that they have for each of the fields. And so you can think of maybe putting other dynamic content in here or conditional statements within your Power Automate flow to reduce the likelihood that the confidence is low for certain PDFs where you may need to go and build a model on top of that. But in this case, it's simplistic. Again, we have all the information filled out into our Excel sheet. So if we pivot over into the Excel sheet now, so here's the Excel sheet. We can see all the information from the PDF came across here. And this has everything that we had in the actual PDF and it's automatically uploaded here. And again, the point of this is just to normalize the information coming through various different vendors who have very similar fields or metadata that you have to have imported into a single list or you want to actually run some information on where you're manually reconciling that today. So the next example I wanna show here is actually using a SharePoint list as well too if you don't wanna use an Excel sheet. It's just kind of taking it a step further in my opinion just because this is a little bit more advanced than using Excel. You can go in and you can search for SharePoint here and I want to create a item on an existing SharePoint list. And so I have in my M365 folder the list name for invoice list and so just like the Excel sheet here, it's gonna dynamically bring up the content or the columns that I've created here. And the only difference between this and the Excel sheet here is that your data type for the list has to match the data type coming through from the invoice, meaning date to date, number to number, and things like that. So this is actually what I'm gonna put as the invoice ID. Customer name is going to be the same as last time. The due date here, this is now where I selected text before, I'm gonna select due date here or else it will fail because of the data type. And the same thing here with the invoice date, the invoice total has the text here, but you have the number field, which is what I have in the column as the data type. And then the vendor here, I can put in as well too as the vendor name. So I'll go ahead and save here, and then I'll test this out again by running another manual test. And then after about a minute here in my SharePoint environment, in my list, I have that as a line item that came up here, and I have all of the values populated that came from that PDF as well. The final example is the most complex of all, but it is showing you the power of what you can do here as far as the integration capability. And so I have a pre-made custom connector for QuickBooks here within this environment. I can click on that and I have an action item here to create an expense. And so I can actually take the dynamic content extracted from these invoices and pump it straight into QuickBooks Online. If you're an MSP, you could do the same with other custom connectors like your PSA tool, for instance. And so in here, I just have a dynamic body where I can populate some JSON and I can dynamically populate some of these fields. Now, just note that this is the more complex option. Obviously, you have to create these custom connectors. You have to set up the API endpoints within the custom connector. And then you should be doing some more dynamic lookups as well too, meaning that when we extract this invoice, we're looking up items like vendor information, or in this case, company information, directly within our third party, in this case, QuickBooks, to populate dynamic content within the body of which we're going to post. But in this case, I hard coded a lot just to show you that you can still populate dynamic values coming from the PDF. But some of these fields here that I have are just hard coded for the sake of time again for this video. So I'll go ahead and save this one more time. And then I'll go ahead and run this test one more time as well too. We'll do it with a recently run trigger so I don't have to upload another PDF this time just to test. And we'll let this flow run and come back when that's complete. Okay, so our flow here succeeded. Let's pop into QuickBooks here to actually see that expense. Okay, yeah, I'm here in QuickBooks and I'm here in an expense section. I've done this multiple times, which is why there's multiple line items, but I can come in here and actually click on this expense and I can see that all the information was filled out here for this particular customer. 
I have the billable hours set here that's straight from the invoice. I have the customer loaded in and I have the payee, which is Wayne Enterprises, which is the vendor that was on that PDF as well too. So lots of dynamic content here that you can create and it gets really, really powerful when you think about all the integration capabilities. So that's everything I want to cover in today's video. Hope this helped. Hope you guys start leveraging this today to help automate invoice processing within your organization. As I mentioned earlier, like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.